Welcome back to CF Tesla. My name is Cody. We are going to be talking about something today that is a little bit interesting. But first, check it out. The brand new merch has come out. Nice and simple. The new Let It Drive design. So if you don't have one already, link is down below each video. You can check those out. So everyone is talking about this new leak about version 11 software that was caught by some dude who got into a new model refresh and snapped some pictures. I've gotten a lot of questions about what my thoughts are on this, so let's take a look. It instantly screams widgets, like we all have on our phones and tablets. It looks like Tesla is trying to bring the UI up to what we are used to on our other devices. So just to point out what you can all see with your own eyes, in the top left you have the map. Now, there was so much hate when Tesla shrunk the map before to make room for that, you know, larger car and display on the left side, but, you know, I'm sure that people will be just fine with the, you know, one-fourth again even smaller, right? Although I'm sure that it will have one of those functions where if you just sort of like tap it, it'll become the full widget, the full screen, at least I hope so, because I definitely want to stare at a map that big. But if it is, I'm sure it's going to be quite common to someone using like a Garmin or something like that that we've all stuck on our windows for a long time. Or maybe they're thinking, well, shoot, people are used to just putting their phones up there for years and using that for navigation. So maybe they'll be okay with it smaller on the screen. So who really knows? But I do hope they give us an option to make it bigger. So underneath that, you have the spot where it's going to sync to your phone and show you things like the calendar, the phone, your messages, all there in one little spot, much easier to access than it was previously where you had to before this would bring some efficiency to that spot. I do like the widget type look that they're going for here. It really kind of makes me feel like it is catching up to my other devices. In fact, it makes me think that down the road, we may actually have the opportunity to customize and change around what the cards look like sometime in the future. Now, of course, I could be totally wrong here, but it certainly does look like Tesla's trying to go that direction. Then on the right, you have the media. The one thing you notice right away is the large display for the graphics of what you're listening to over there. That great big banner is gonna look pretty cool. The screen really doesn't show a lot though. We don't see anything about how we access streaming versus, you know, if you wanted to sing karaoke in your car or listen to podcasts. So it'd be curious to see where those are all tucked in. And there's a lot of this tucking in that we can see here on this display. I would really like to have the option to maybe move around the widgets and kind of rearrange what I was looking at. I think that would be something that would be a huge advantage and people would really like if they're gonna go this route with widget type feel. And again, that's just my interpretation. That might not be actually what's going on here. I also like how they shadowed the widgets to give it that really cool like depth look that it has there. I think that looks pretty cool. You get a much more modern blocky and floaty look to the buttons at the bottom, but a lot appears to be missing there as well. You don't see the settings, the music, etc. All you see are the climate controls, heat your seats, change the volume, change the, you know, where you're shooting the air, that sort of thing. Which means a lot, again, is being tucked away somewhere else. Now, before I go any further, if you like pizza, please take two effortless seconds and go down and just tap that like button for me. As I've mentioned, you guys all on this channel, we creators are paid based on interaction with you. And so even if you hate this video and I'm doing a terrible job, you hitting that like button gives us confidence to try again in the future. So thank you. So back to the screen here. You also don't see any driving information, which in this case makes sense because we're on the Model S, not the Model 3 or Y, and all that information can be displayed on the steering wheel screen. But what does this mean for the Model 3 and the Model Y? This will have to be somewhere on the screen that can always be seen, which means this whole display we're looking at here can't look like this. This does give me some sort of doubt that maybe the Model 3 and Y is gonna look a lot different than this. I mean, having this information right here is stuff that you're gonna wanna have up while you're driving, which means this isn't just a screen that flips up and then goes away. The navigation and all that needs to be there on the screen while you're driving. So if you're gonna have the car plus all the visualizations, plus the maps and all that on the same screen, this really doesn't work for the Model 3 or Y. And maybe I'm missing something. Maybe this is never supposed to be. Maybe this is just for the Model S with the two different screens. Maybe that's all this is about and I just missed that somewhere. But my interpretation is this is what's also gonna be coming in the Model 3 in some version. Correct me down below, I know you will. Also with the four rows of dots on the left hand side there, it really makes me wonder if that is a scroll bar or could be a scroll bar. Meaning if you were to run your finger up and down that side, would it scroll through different widgets or different pages or different layouts? Also that clock on the left hand side is tiny. If you don't have glasses and need them, you might want to get them before this update. So you have all obviously seen this car on the left hand side in that quote scroll area. It appears to access the settings, which we talked about being 
missing from the lower part or the lower buttons a little earlier on. Now, before we get into what happens when we tap that button, let's talk about what they did here. It appears they have tucked all of this, all the settings, everything behind this button really cleaning up and giving it a kind of a fresh feel to the screen. Now we don't know this for sure, but it would seem all the other controls such as entertainment, media, settings, all that are all now tucked back there behind this button. Unless of course those widgets or cards or whatever we're calling them are always stationary on that front screen, in which case there is no reason to bring them up or down or tap or hide or put them away or whatever. Currently right now with the Model 3 and Y, we just have the big map there. And when we wanna see the media or entertainment system, we tap a button and it pulls up in front of us. But it looks like with this, it's always gonna be there or not. So it looks like to access some of these functions, you're gonna to have to tap twice where we used to only tap once. And in other areas, we're gonna tap once where we used to have to tap twice or three times. An example of that would be all the functions of the phone. You used to have to tap multiple times to actually access your messages. Well, now they're gonna be front and center. So when you tap on the car, you get this control panel that pops up. Here you get all your goodies, such as opening up the front, the trunk, opening the charging port, and opening the glove box. You can lock windows or adjust screen brightness. Most of this I'm okay with, but there is just one button I don't like being here. At least I think I don't like it. That is the camera button. I use this all the time and not just backing up. I like having that on the main screen, very easy to access. Now I know I can use voice commands and in just two taps I can get there here with this setup and you know, I promise I won't cry about this for more than three, four months. But let's just say that if Tesla gave me the ability to customize where I put my buttons, that's one button I wouldn't tuck behind another button. Now, there are other interesting switches. And did I ever mention I really like switches? You have this smart switch, which most are saying is Tesla's new feature that controls the drive modes automatically through detecting what's going on using autopilot. So basically, this is supposed to replace the drive stock. <laughs> I mean... Well, let's just say I'm looking forward to testing that one. Then you have this media on drive switch that opens up your media player during drive. I'm not sure what this really is about. I don't think it means it's gonna start playing music when you put the car into drive. The speculation is that it will turn on the rear screen found in the Model S refresh. So that screen kind of right in front of the back passengers there when that's toggled to on, it'll fire that up when the car is in drive. So I like where Tesla's going with all this. I'm curious what the Model 3 and Model Y version will look like. I think it will be cool if Tesla would give us one card or one widget that we can kind of customize to put in there maybe five things that we like things we all use because we all use things a little bit differently. Some of you guys use the voice commands for everything. Some people can't stand the voice commands. So it'd be nice to have an option to put a little tab or something that we can kind of select and add five things that we want to use all the time. I would put the backup camera in there, maybe music selection, who knows, right? But it kind of needs to have that feature. So I sit back and look at what Tesla's doing here. Big updates. I think it's so much like getting a new update on my phone or on my iPad. I mean, it can completely change the feel of the car. When this update comes out, this new version is gonna change the way we interact with our car and see our car. It's gonna be like getting into a new car where we just can see something new and touch something new and feel something new. It's pretty amazing. And this is what you get for Tesla, buying a Tesla. I know so many of you guys on my channel, you're in my Facebook group, you're everywhere else. You guys, you know, you're, you're almost on the fence of buying a Tesla. And you know, this is pretty, this is what you get. This is the excitement of owning a Tesla. You think spending, uh, you know, 50, 60 grand on a car is a lot of money. It is, but man, you really feel like you're getting a new car every two, three months with this kind of a car. I don't know, I'm just excited. I've never once in my life regretted buying my Tesla. And right now, 16 months down the road from when I originally bought it, if I had the same choice, I'd buy the same car again and pay the same price and I would pay for full self drive. Anyway, what are your thoughts on this update? What are you hoping comes with it? What are your thoughts on how the Model 3 and Y are gonna interact with this? You may know a lot more about this than I do from maybe you guys saw some other channel or something, but bring it all down below in the comments. Love to chat with you about it. If you haven't joined our Facebook group yet, go down below, check it out, join with us, no negativity. It doesn't matter if you ask a question that's already been asked in the group. We're not going to beat you up for it. We want you there. See you on the next one.